Hello, Mike Me. I'm sure you're excited for the upcoming boot camp session, Power Up Your Team for Hackathon Success, because we're going to cover some information that I believe will really help your team excel at tackling whichever challenge you choose to take on. This session invites you to view your hackathon team's work through an equity lens. But before we get going, let me introduce myself. My name is Lori, and I'm one of the Space Apps Ambassadors this year. I'm the founder of the Civic Hacker Network, a networking and support hub for people creating change in their communities using data. Maybe you're an experienced space app participant and have, and have already hand-selected your teammates for their different technical or soft skills. Perhaps you reached out on social media or through the space apps platform to gather a team from among people you've never met before. Either way, in order for your team to be successful at any level, you will need to be able to collaborate, brainstorm, plan, and execute as a team. One of the most amazing things about space apps is that we see such a diverse array of ideas and approaches to solving problems. This diversity in thinking is key and means that we need people from a variety of backgrounds and levels of expertise to be welcomed in and to fully participate. Identifying some behaviors that you can proactively engage in that will counteract harmful tendencies we all have thanks to certain social norms. Let's get started. To begin, we're gonna examine when it comes to individuals on a team. I'll talk about why this question of who has power matters, and then we'll cover a few actions you can take to make sure power is shared between your team members or have influence on others. A lot of time we focus on formal power in work or educational settings. Formal power is the kind of power a person has based on a job title or their role in an organization. And what we're focused on in this session is often called informal power. Informal power refers to the influence people carry based on things like relationships to other powerful people, socioeconomic status, race or ethnicity, personality or experience. Some privileges are earned, like when my children get screen time after homework is done, and some are not, such as privileges some of us have because we were born into citizenship in our home countries. We're going to do a short thought exercise. And I want you to mentally walk through this with me, so I'm gonna slow down. I'd like everyone to just take a moment to think of someone in your life that you view as having power. Think about that person's background, where they live, what kinds of demographic labels you can apply to them. What privileges would you say they've had in life? Now turn your thoughts to yourself. Can you think of a situation in which you knew that you were in a position of power, where you had the upper hand? Can you think about what privileges you have that might have come into play to create that situation for you. Now, finally, think about your Space Apps teammates and consider for a moment, with this in mind, can you think of what you might need to do to share power during your work together on your project? This may all seem a bit abstract, so let's apply this lens to some of the concrete steps you will go through as you participate in space apps. Differences in power can affect your team every step of the way. To benefit from all the gifts individuals on your teams bring to the table, be aware of what kinds of assumptions, biases, and qualifiers are causing you to over or undervalue input from your teammates you have the opportunity to pay attention to how you assign roles and responsibilities, share ideas, and support each other during intense work periods. Harmful power dynamics can really show themselves in communications. 
just think about how you tend to talk to someone you perceive as having the same power as you compared to how you might speak to someone you presume power over or someone you share power with. Now, which way of communicating is more conducive to working together? So you'll have some decisions to make in your group about what to include in your brief project demo and write-up. The different perspectives of your team about what is compelling can provide an opportunity to see things from another valuable point of view, not just a dominant one. Remember, each step, each interaction is an opportunity for your team to do great work as a whole that's greater than just the sum of its parts. So here are some tips to help you avoid some of the pitfalls of unhealthy power dynamics and power up. When your team is getting started, whether you're working with people you know or new people, please don't presume to know what any individual has to offer. Talk to each other and get to know what skills and talents each person brings by asking them in an open-ended way. As you're having discussions, your team may be very good about giving everyone the space to speak. However, there's a good chance that someone on the team still won't feel comfortable speaking out in the group chat or meeting. Remember, having all of your team's voices is a power up. You will reach a better result. So then it is worth it to go ahead and also use alternative methods for extracting ideas from everyone. Some examples are smaller breakout groups or written individual brainstorming sessions that get shared with the group. A friend of mine who was a skilled facilitator gave me this next one. Wait. So if you find you're the person dominating discussions, I'm guilty of this, every now and again, you should check in with yourself and ask, why am I talking? Perhaps taking a breather uh, will help someone else to have the chance to give their perspective. As more of the group's voices are listened to, the dynamic shifts to shared. In a 48-hour hackathon, people get tired and may tend to fall back on those tendencies that don't necessarily serve the purpose of equity and inclusion. When we falter in these ways, we can correct with kindness by calling people in rather than calling them out. Meaning we're not here to shame, gossip, or otherwise try to take down someone. We're of course not talking about somebody being intentionally malicious, but we're talking about someone who may be totally oblivious to how their use of power and privilege is affecting someone else. When people are valued and have a sense of belonging, they can do their best work. So remember, your team's power increases when power is shared. That doesn't mean there's no leader or defined roles on the team. It just means that there's equity in how people treat each other while acting in those roles. I hope that this information will inspire you to be an awesome teammate and that you'll carry it with you beyond the hackathon. Know that you don't have to continue default behaviors and attitudes that will limit your team's creativity, productivity, and ingenuity. The prompts I gave you during the reflection earlier in this session were from a conversation template on power and privilege created by Dr. Akila Kade of Change Kade for the Icebreaker video platform. I would like to invite those in the Space Apps community who would like to engage in further discussion on this topic to come share their experiences and participate in the full conversation.